I'm getting signs from the tech team now that ah, here is Simon. Welcome, Simon. Hi. Good to see you. Uh, are you are you receiving us loud and clear? Absolutely loud and clear. Thank you. Great, Simon. Um, Simon, so Jeff and I were really interested to ask you about this question of reality and how real are these ideas that are, are floating about. Um, for example, you know, the activists who are at Cochabamba and who did come to Copenhagen and were there for a while before being excluded, the civil society groups mainly, um, are the people who are trying to carry the message of climate justice and faster action forward. But is it really practical for them to reach a wider public anywhere and especially in certain countries which which really need to get on board like china and russia how, how strong are the civil society groups there for example well, i think the answer to your first question is um the reality check is that climate justice is a real issue and it's hugely important that activists continue to make that clear uh, I think the, the qualifying piece is that there's a difference between uh, a call to arms and a solution pathway. And they're both valid in very different contexts, uh, but we need to, at this point, uh, shape solutions that can be digested by uh, a negotiating process that you know has severe intestinal problems. Um, you know, we, we need to find ways in which to drive the climate justice agenda and the carbon abatement agenda, because justice will be lacking if we don't resolve the mitigation problem, um, in ways that, frankly, suit the instrumental interests of politicians and business leaders that are uh, focused on national interests and economic interests. So if if the test question is, can we reach a level of political consciousness where national interests and economic interests don't dominate, frankly, I don't see very little prospect of that. Uh, but if the question is, can we shape the climate justice agenda so that it, at least in key areas, is consistent with uh, economic imperatives or at least the politics of economic competitiveness, then I think, yes, we shouldn't see these two things as opposite ends of the spectrum. But that, that sounds a bit like um, the, the Copenhagen crew, if I can simplify it like that. They don't have to change much because they're not going to change much. They're going to refuse to change much. But the activists will have to change their way of operating is that fair or not fair? No, I, I mean, A, I, I don't think that's right, and B, I don't think that's fair, although I'm not entirely sure the difference between the two is. Um, you know, I think that you know, the level of domestic mitigation that many developed countries are offering, so once you remove the offset argument, is simply inadequate. You know, we, mm. we know that. Mm. We have to continue to push... Uh, for those numbers to be significantly increased. Um, how we get there, um, frankly, um, doesn't always require a saintly model. You know, I am not expecting to persuade dirty American industries to see the light. Um, and, and so we have to find ways that you know, may ultimately be focused on delivering climate justice, um, but appeal to often people's worst nature and, and that's not for a... For example, for example? What, what examples would you give of that if it's not about uh, uh, getting the dirty fuel lobby, for example, to, to change? You know, what, what would... I've got a lot of other noises coming into the system. Does that matter? Uh... Can you not hear me now? Yeah, I can just about hear you. Well, a simple example would be we may be able to achieve much higher levels of domestic abatement in developed countries uh, if we can deal with trade and competitiveness issues in ways that 
powerful political business lobbies do not see significant losses of competitiveness as a result. It, is that fair? You know, we can argue that point. Would it deliver a greater appetite for domestic mitigation? Probably yes. That would be one example. Second, so, so just to, to just to make this very. Uh, concrete do you mean for example if there were more government regulations or, uh, that required all businesses to do something and give, gave them more of a sense of a level playing field yes. then they'd be more willing to act is that the kind of thing you mean yes i think that's right i mean climate justice has deep historical roots it also has some contemporary aspects to disadvantage one set of businesses because of a climate deal um, over a set of businesses that are allowed to continue to spew carbon into the atmosphere um, actually doesn't make a lot of sense by any measure. Mm -hmm. you know, we shouldn't get lost in confusing historical payments for continuing to allow dirty industries to pollute the world. So we need to construct level playing fields as far as possible in international markets, and that's complicated. And when you talk about domestic abatement, could you say exactly what you mean by that? Yes, when you look at um, some of the um, commitments being offered by, say, Japan and the US, uh, to a lesser extent, but also Europe, um, for any particular number, 10%, 20%, 30%, a significant part of that is achieved through purchasing um, in effect, cheaper carbon through carbon markets, whether it be in China or Brazil or, or Indonesia or South Africa, and doesn't necessarily involve a reduction in mm -hmm. carbon emissions in the domestic economy of the U.S., China, uh, U.S., Japan, or Europe. Um, now, from a cost-effectiveness point of view, it, it may well be cheaper to buy a ton of carbon from Brazil that costs five dollars because it only takes five dollars to reduce deforestation to the value of saving mm -hmm. one ton as compared to saving a ton of carbon in the US which may cost forty dollars in terms of the investments that need to be made so on the one hand you know buying offsets actually does use limited resources more effectively in trying to maximize the reduction in carbon emitted on the other hand there is a clear imperative for the North, developed countries, wealthier countries, to change the way they do economics, which means making mm -hmm. major investments in the North, even although those costs may be higher for a period of time. So that's what we mean by domestic mm -hmm. mitigation versus the overall mitigation target of a country like the 